soldiers of shoot. Soldiers of shoot back on the front lines once again, coming fresh off the heels of another big week in professional wrestling. I am the Electric City Saint. Thank you for joining us tonight. If you are a returning listener, welcome back and thanks for your support over the past three weeks. You know, if this is your first time hearing us too, though, I mean, and you like what you hear on tonight's program, I mean, be sure to give us a subscri- subscribe. I'd, I'd highly recommend it. It's very helpful for you to access our shows a lot faster. But first, I am not alone tonight. I'm joined by one of my SOS brothers. Let's bring him in now. He doesn't need a big introduction. He's been already been spoken for countless of times. He's one of the best in the business. The one and only Hollywood Edwards. What's up, my friend? What's going on tonight, Saint? Just come. I just watched Raw. I don't know if you did. I hope you didn't. Whew. Bro, I actually want to ask you about that before we get into the main stuff that we have on schedule tonight what are they doing with this bro kind of like i guess give us a re- little recap of what happened tonight on raw because i didn't really watch it but i i heard some of the parts of that happened and to me what they're doing it does it really just doesn't make any sense to me like like bro what are they seriously what are they doing with this okay i can sum this up quickly as i'm watching the show i'm texting q and General Stames. We're texting each other back and forth. I'll put it to you this way. Oh, at about 10 o'clock, General Stames, I'm assuming, fell asleep because his messages stopped dead. And for good reason. Q and I stayed with it, though. And, oh, my God, dude. Here's Okay, so here it is in a nutshell. The show kicks off Becky, Stephanie, and Triple H. And they basically did the same thing that they did last week. But... With a twist. They said, all right, Becky, you got your your clearance from the doctor. So here's the deal. You can have the, man- the Mania match against Ronda, but you have to apologize to us for punching us and slapping us and being a jerk, basically. Think about it. I'm going to give you all night to think about it. Okay, so... On one hand, good on WWE for opening the show with an angle, following through for the rest of the three hours because they kept going back to Becky and people are giving her advice in the back. Should she apologize or should she not apologize? It's just an apology. It's for the match, right? It ends with Becky, Triple H, and Steph in the ring. Here's where it gets funny. (laughs) (laughs) Becky apologizes. It's two words. I'm not going to prevent that from my dream. So, I'm sorry. Triple H congratulates her. Stephanie congratulates her. They walk out. Becky says, is that really it? And Triple H said, yeah, congratulations. You're going to Mania. She starts firing up the crowd, and all of a sudden, Vince McMahon comes out, and he says, you can apologize to them all you want. I'm not going to take an apology. You, You call yourself the man, but I'm the man. So how about this, Becky Lynch? I'm going to suspend you for 60 days for what you did, and that'll lead us up to, oh, I don't know, five days after WrestleMania. So have fun, because you won't be there. And he said, so instead, I have a new opponent for Ronda Rousey. Here she is, Charlotte Flair. And that's how it ended. Bro, good Lord. (laughs) Man, I, I I really don't know what what the hell they're doing with this. It, it that's just, it. Number one, you obviously you you already suspended her. What basically last week? Then you unsuspend her on this show, <laughs> and then they resuspend her already again. Like it, it doesn't. It's just so silly, honestly, to me. Like I, I there's just so many better ways they could go about doing this, and I almost have to wonder: Do you think they pulled the trigger on letting her back too soon? Because I kind of feel like they could have let this ride out a little bit longer. Yeah, much uh, like they always do. They they have to rush job everything, you know. It's got to be hot shot. They can't just wait and let things build naturally. They have to just mess with it. They got to tinker with it. I I fully expected Becky to be off for, I don't know, maybe two weeks. But there she was. Yeah, me too, honestly. There she was. And uh, I guess, well, people were saying that the, the original plan was to make it a triple threat. And... 
I mean, in my opinion, I got to think that plan was out there because Vince McMahon probably doesn't trust Becky Lynch in a spot like that with Ronda Rousey, but he probably trusts Charlotte. So I'm guessing, Electric City Saint, that I'm going to assume that Becky, over the next uh, two, three weeks till Mania, I'm sure she's going to have to try and get back in the match, and then it'll be a triple threat match. Where it goes from there, I don't know. Yeah, I kind of feel the same way, too. I I'm looking at it this way. I think they're doing the same exact like build up and storyline that they did with Daniel Bryan a few few years ago when they had him uh, basically earn his way into the triple threat match, you know, with uh, Batista and, and Orton there. But the thing with that, which is funny about this though, of course, is is she actually won the Rumble, so she, like automatically she should be, you know, qualified to be in 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 that match, of course. Right. But like, I, it's just really weird what they're doing with this. But I I also feel like though they could salvage this. And what I would personally do if this was me is something similar to what you said. You you have her essentially earn her way back into the match. Now, this is a little fantasy booking for you. I'm going to try to keep it short. What I would personally do is I would either have her basically, what I would either have her do is either fight Stephanie McMahon at WrestleMania, like the opening match or something like, okay, if you beat, if you beat me, I'll put put you in the match. We'll 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 make it a triple threat. But I don't know if they would necessarily do that. Now, what I personally would do, I don't think they'd have Stephanie wrestle her number one. But what they could do, and I think this would actually be very very well done if if they do it correctly. It, it would be very brilliant. I would actually have. Her or Vince, it seems like the, the feud is more gravitating towards her and Vince now, correct? That After what I saw tonight, I think so, yes. All right, so here's what I would personally do if this was me booking it. I would have, you know, build it up the next couple of weeks. I wouldn't rush it too quick right away, but I would have it get to the point basically where he goes, uh, you know, like, all right, Becky, uh, I'm going to have you face my own hand-picked opponent for you at WrestleMania. If you beat this person, you're you're in the, like and like you said, like make it a triple threat. Now, what I would personally do, like and like I said, have him have a hand-picked opponent. I think the perfect person for that, you know, to be that like hit man or, or hit woman in this situation and, and be that hired gun would be for him for them to bring up Shayna Baszler. We've we talked about her on you know on this channel briefly in the past, and I think she would be the perfect fit to have in that in that situation there to have her come in and basically be you know the hired gun like of like basically the gatekeeper for you know Becky has to take her out first to earn her way up to Rousey or whatever. I think that would make sense if Ronda, if it was Ronda that does it. Right, yeah, I, I kind of agree with that. I, I mean, I guess it could go either way. They could of do, course, yeah, but... they could do that. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking because it's Vince, the first fantasy booking that you mentioned about Stephanie. I could see that happening. Opening match with Stephanie, she wins, crowd goes crazy, and then you got, you know, you got to wait, got to wait, let it sizzle till the main event. So four hours later or whatever, you get your Becky again in the triple threat. Yeah, I think it, I think that could certainly work. Now, do you have anything else you want to talk about with Raw or anything else worth mentioning, no, or do you want to no. kind of get on to the main event? Well, here? I'll say th- I'll <laughs> say this: it's it's interesting because before they started uh, with Becky, before Becky came out, Triple H and Steph were talking, and they were hyping a little bit for uh, Elimination Chamber this Sunday. And Triple H mentioned that Ronda Rousey will be defending against Ruby Riot, and. As soon as they said it, it all went to shit because they basically basically spoiled it. Because once Becky came out, it was all about Becky and Ronda at WrestleMania. Becky and Ronda at WrestleMania. And they never covered the fact that, well, Ruby Riot could win this Sunday. Now, Michael Cole did later on. But during the promo, and again, it's typical WWE. Instead of building Ruby Riot up to maybe she's going to throw a cog in the works somehow by winning the title. No, it's just... Yeah, Ronda's going to defend against her, but don't worry, it'll be Ronda and Becky at WrestleMania. And then Vince comes out, well, don't worry, it'll be Ronda and Charlotte at WrestleMania. 
you know, they're they're putting Ruby Riot in a situation now where basically she's a jobber. Everybody knows she's a jobber. They are admitting that she's the jobber in the match. So, I don't know. It's just typical, typical nonsense. And the rest of the three hours, man, oh my god, it was like pulling teeth. They don't have anything, dude. They do not have anything. Again, it was a. There was a match between Balor and McIntyre, and then there was, you know, because Lashley was out there. Baron Corbin came out, and then Kurt Angle made the save, so they made the three-on-three match. They've done that three-on-three match I don't know how many times over the past two months, and they did it again tonight. And and this is the, a big chunk of the show, Saint. Uh, you're right. talking, you're talking like you know a ten-minute setup for the, and then they have the big schmas with the three-on-three, and then they do the three-on-three match, and it's another 20, 30 minutes. The big chunks of the middle of the show are so boring. Because they've done it a million times, and of course yeah, the other, the other, the other one other quick thing I wanted to say the uh, yeah. the revival won the tag championships finally tonight against the uh, Rudin Gable. You think they kind of put that on them to kind of keep them happy? Yep. Yeah, yep. I, it, it, it almost certainly seems that way because it seems like I think they kind of just, you know, they've been wanting to get out of there, I think. And I think maybe this is kind of them, WWE throwing them a bone and being like, okay, here you go. We're going to put the titles on you and let you run with it and see if you could elevate the tag division. I mean, that, that's what they want to do. I mean, we've we've said this in not long ago last week, I believe it was. That I think, you know, they have so many damn good tag teams in this day and age that they really could bring that back to the forefront if they're given the opportunity. But if, if they're going to be having five-minute pre-show matches every pay-per-view, that clearly doesn't help. Right, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> clearly. Now, there was one other thing that happened that was interesting involving Dean Ambrose, but I think I want to save that for later in the week. Maybe you and I grab Q and we'll uh, we'll discuss that a little bit. Maybe some SmackDown talk with that maybe tomorrow night. What do you think? Hmm, I'm, I'm, I'm liking that idea every every second I hear about it. Okay. Bro, too, like, before we move on to the like the main thing we want to talk about here, it really is sad, though, what, what they're doing with Ruby Riot because like you said, She's kind of just being thrown in there, I think, and they're not even like making her seem credible or believable that she even has a chance of taking out Ronda Rousey, even just to to mix things up. Maybe if they should actually like switch it up and have Riot win somehow, and then still have a way to do the Charlotte, uh, you know, Becky and Ronda, because I think they could still figure out a way to, you know, they still have a couple like a month or more that they could still get to that point. But I, I don't think they would risk doing it honestly well i'll tell you what i would agree with that i think i think that would be giving them too much credit to think that way to bury her on purpose tonight to you know cover up for the fact that they would put the title on her but i'll tell you what if you want to make an additional star out of this maybe you do it maybe let her steal the belt sunday and everybody be like oh my god now what are they gonna do a four-way you know, does Becky just beat Ruby Riot? But then what about Ronda? But Charlotte, you know, it might. I, I think a cog in the works could work. I mean, maybe you can build a an extra star out of it. Yeah, I believe so, too. I think that that would actually add some intrigue to it, quite frankly. You know, it, it's funny that we did. We were just talking about title changes here. I, this is a perfect segue mm-hmm. uh, earlier this morning. Big news uh, out of New Japan Pro Wrestling, and this is the main thing we want to cover tonight. Uh, our, our boy, uh, you uh, even you said in the past, AC has been supporting this guy since day one, since he was wearing the black tights and Ring of and Ring of Honor. We, we we said it, we've said it on this program, bro. Our our, our boy here, uh, Jay White, uh, wins the IWGP Heavy Heavyweight Championship against uh, Hiroshi Tanihashi. Bro, what what an amazing match and what a huge upset and surprise that was that was that was truly something else uh, i want to get your opinion about this because uh I, you know you always have a, a great mind for this stuff and i i've you know i think you've been a big fan of new japan and of course jay white for several years now so i'd like to really get your take on this uh did you see the match and what did you think about it yeah uh well first the captain of swag ac and myself you know, we were at a point where we 
it was it was really when we first started getting in new into New Japan a few years ago. They would have the young lions wrestle each other, and of course, if anybody knows anything about J- Japanese uh, wrestling in New Japan, before they go out for their excursions, they're just in black trunks and black boots. They don't have a gimmick officially, if you will, and they would put those guys, you know, kind of on the undercard pre-show matches. And every show, you know, we would do the review for the New Japan show, and you know, one of us would say to each other, you know, that guy again, what's his name? I don't know, the young lion. The, the which one? Oh, the guy from New Zealand or wherever he's from. You know? And then it's then we started paying attention. And then the next show would happen and we Jay White again. Did you see that, Matt? Yes. Oh, oh you know. So it it built built up from there for myself and Captain of Swag. And I gotta tell you, Saint, a lot of people are out there thinking Oh my God, they put the title on Jay White. I'm seeing a little pushback. But in my opinion, and we've talked about this, General Stames even brought it up on a past show in the past two weeks. They need to build new stars. They need to build new, fresh, young stars. And I just want to say really quickly too, the guy is 26 years old. People are kind of complaining that it's too much too soon. But I think it fits the mold of what they do there. I mean, if people remember, Nakamura was, what, 22-23 when he had his first reign. Okada was 23-24 when he had his first reign. So, Jay White being 26, this isn't new. They like to do this. They make the star. He's He's got the belt now. Maybe he doesn't hold it for an entire year. Maybe he does. But he'll get knocked off, and then quickly he'll be he'll become a two-time champion. And that's how they build their champions up. So they must have very big plans for Jay White moving forward. Yeah, it absolutely does seem like that they have quite a bit. It does seem like they're going to give him the ball and let him run with it. I think he's a very, believe it or not, I think it's a very good decision. I think, it, it, it honestly, it was the logical outcome quite frankly, with, with this matchup. I mean, you know, people can argue that, you know, it may have been too soon for them to put him on the title or put the title on him, I mean. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I think personally the timing's perfect. I mean, let's put it this way. Kenny Omega, he's gone. I mean, they did later announce that he, with his deal, he'll be able to still work some dates with, with New Japan if he likes. But I don't believe he'll be in a full-time guy there anymore. But then also, too, like, we, Omega? You, you know, the Bullet Club has... Started, yeah. Uh, yeah. Of from- course, like I said... Uh, keep going. From, from what I read, Omega does that have that in his contract, and he said that was one of the things, a big thing that he wanted, and of course WWE would not put that in his contract. AEW did, and I'm pretty sure he lives there currently. I think he lives in Japan, so if he's calling Japan home, you know, I'm okay with if, if he's the guy that's allowed to go, you know, work for another company that's under contract to AEW, That's that's cool. Yeah, and I feel like, too, like like I said, what I was getting at earlier is I do feel like the timing actually with this was perfect. Like I said, Omega left. You know, the Bullet Club is essentially reformed, and you have the aging Tanahashi as the champion. And, you know, also right now, there, I feel it feels like New Japan is kind of in this transitional period mm-hmm. where, they, you know, they kind of really did need that shot in the arm, and they needed something new, and, you know, this is a perfect way to build a new star. And, bro, it, it really is incredible to think about it that this dude is only 26 years old. That's it, it's, it's incredible to think about that because he could easily have, you know, 10, 20 more extra years, good years sure. in, his, in, in the business. Right. And, I mean, it's crazy that he's this young and, and he's already, you know, pretty much already has the most prestigious championship in, in professional wrestling right now. I mean, that shows a lot right there that they have, you know, they have the courage and, you know, they have the backing for him that they trust him enough with that title and have him in that big spot. And, you know, two over the past year or so, he has really, he's really taken off, bro. He's, he's taken out, you know, he's beaten Omega. He's, you know, he's beaten, uh, Okada huge match at the Tokyo dome. Mm -hmm. I mean, that that's, that's saying a lot right there that they have a lot of faith in him to have him topple pretty much their biggest name that they've had for the last several, like seven years or so. 
in that company. And of course, now he's he's beaten Tanahashi several times. It almost to me, it almost makes a lot of sense that you know that for them to do this. And it's it's very cool. I'm not sure if you you realize this or not. This is coming off seven years since they had the big upset where they had Okada beat uh, Tanahashi for the title in the same exact building. Oh, my God. Has it been that long already? Yeah, <laughs> to, to, to the date. Oh, my goodness. It, it, it almost seems like they, they like purposely did that or something. Like it, It's very cool. It, it's, in my opinion, it's textbook storytelling. And, you know, I, you know, it's kind of how it's the same kind of situation. Like ghetto basically led a, a new promising start to to the top, you know, and, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. I'm not, I, I can't even be mad about this. I think, you know, I, I, I think everything about it's perfect. And it's really weird to me that, you know, w- from what I see online, there actually are a lot of, you know, mixed yeah, reactions, yeah. mixed reviews about this. It, it very, it very much shocked me in, in my personal opinion. I'll say this too with I think it's smart business wise because they have the Madison Square Garden show coming up very soon. I think it's smart to have it on the leader of Bullet Club. To walk into yeah. New York, you know, I think that's that's a pretty smart move. Yeah, and I and speaking of, you know, the Bullet Club too, I feel like him leading this new era of the Bullet Club will really help get that you know, get them back where they need to be. I feel like, I mean, we all love the elite, of course. I mean, obviously we were very much invested into all elite wrestling, but I kind of feel like they haven't had that vicious streak to them the last year or so. And Mm -hmm. I think with him at the forefront, I think they could easily lead them back to, you know, in that direction. I mean, especially, you know, you have uh, G.O.D., the Gorillas of Destiny, you know, Tonga Loa and, uh, Tamatanga and all them guys there. I think they have that mean streak to them now again that I kind of felt like they lacked the last few years. And, you know, it, it's it's perfect in my opinion because uh, Japan really likes their foreign villains. It makes sense on so many levels. And, yeah, basically like you were saying, they're, they got to restock. And right now Bullet Club, I think, needs that big win. So now they look stronger too. I mean, I think everybody wins – within that that world you know everybody wins by this i i like the move yeah i i absolutely like it too and it's funny too like if you're looking at this from a japanese fan perspective everybody wanted like that fairy tale ending they they, they wanted this the, the miracle run of tanahashi's title reign to continue and bro switchblade jay white he doesn't give a shit about your dreams bro Mm -hmm. He don't give a shit about your fairy fairy tales or your hopes. I mean, that's that's the brilliance of of this whole thing. Like, he he really is right now, in my opinion, of like a perfect heel to to have topple Tanahashi and and uh, you know kind of crush that dream. I just the one thing I think that some people, or besides like saying that they think it's too soon, some people also kind of feel like it's weird that they're having shorter title reigns all of a sudden. Because as you remember, you know, Omega really only held it a little bit, and then Tanahashi. I think essentially this was only, you know, a month month and a half later, he's only had the belt and he's already lost it. Yeah, well, I think Kenny leaving may have uh, triggered that whole thing. Maybe right. he, maybe he told them early on, and that's why they took it off him really quick because they figured, okay, well, if we're losing you and we're you know the elite, and okay, how do we get from here to here to here? Well, we take it from Kenny, put it on Tanahashi, and take it from Tanahashi, and put it on Bullet Club again, put it on Jay White. It could it could be that way, you know. So he may have like he may have been the spark to to cause all that. So maybe it'll settle down now again. But like the old timers say saint there's money in the chase so the chase now becomes who tanahashi trying to get the title back maybe yeah i i I very much agree with that i think with you know they have the new japan uh cup coming up Mm -hmm. i think that would be a very good starting point to establish you know the pecking order of essentially who's going to take on him next uh, I kind of feel like there's a lot of different ways they could go with this. They could, they could obviously, you know, maybe have him like defend against Tanahashi first, and then slowly build up towards, I don't know, maybe Abushi, Naito, 
uh, Suzuki. I think the ultimate goal, though, at this point, if it, if it was me booking it, I would have this be the you know two year long story where I kind of feel like you have this culminate with him against Okada and Okada goes over and wins back the title and you know the Rainmaker is officially back at that point. Sure, right, makes sense. Now, can you explain something to me before we get out of here? Because this I can to try. me doesn't. It, <laughs> I, I don't know if you're going to be able to do it either because this doesn't make any sense to me. Now, I'm not going to specifically mention any people because I think I've seen it a couple times online and it, it totally doesn't make sense to me. I mean, I, I realize some people's mental faculties aren't quite on, you know, the highest <laughs> level sometimes. Okay. <laughs> but this is the, one of the stupidest things I've ever seen or, or read online. Somebody referred to him as a vanilla midget. Explain that to me, bro. Because Jay White? Number one, yeah, to me, it, I, it really baffles me, bro, because the guy is six foot one. He's 220. <laughs> How is that a vanilla midget, bro? <laughs> that's somebody that has no idea who he is. That's your explanation. That's somebody that's the smartest guy in the wrestling room, and he has no idea what New Japan is. He pretends he does. He has no idea who Jay White is. That's what that means. That's yeah, not that's I, not a vanilla midget I, by any standards. No, sorry. No, absolutely not. And, and like it's funny because it almost it, like it. Number one, it, it it's like it almost practically comes off as a racist statement. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. I'm not gonna get political on on this or whatever. But it, like to me, like that's almost you know. Just well, sort of it's, like racist towards Caucasian people. Well, you could <laughs> you could say it that way, but yeah, you know that's that's an old school term. You know, Daniel Bryan's yeah. a vanilla midget. You know, da 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 da. Yeah, but you, that does not apply to Jay White. I'm sorry. Tell that guy to try again. Try better next time. Tell him. <laughs> yeah, exactly, bro. <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, that, to me, like like I saw that. I'm. I honestly was wondering, did they? know who jay white is because you know so like i said he's six foot one 220 like he doesn't even like remotely resemble somebody that would be like you know like like a daniel bryan like or uh, a finn balor he's you know he has maybe a similar build somewhat as a finn balor but i he's obviously way taller and i think he has more you know muscle and you know mass on him yep Yep, that's just a hater, flat out hater. Probably hates Bullet Club. Probably hates AEW. Probably hates uh, uh, Elite. You know who that is? I have a feeling. I think I know who it might be. You, <laughs> you know who I'm probably thinking about. Electric City Saint. <laughs> hey, I could honestly. It wasn't. It's like you know how everybody practically hides behind a, a friggin' username this, these day and age on Twitter. It wouldn't be surprised. It wouldn't really surprise me if it's him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he probably has like fifty different accounts. He switches back and forth to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anything else you want to talk about, or anything else tonight, or, or do you think we're we pretty much covered it? Yeah, like I said. And you back me up on this. And just in case I forget, I do want to touch on Dean Ambrose with you. But we'll we'll wait for tomorrow. We'll get Q on and, you know, see if anything happens on SmackDown. Maybe Becky will show up and they'll put her back in the match. Because, you know, 24 hours is a long wait. You know, <laughs> <laughs> got to put her back in there, pal. I know it sure seems that way in WWE's like, you know, in, in that in that realm of thinking. I mean, Jesus, it, it's like you, you said, she practically got suspended and unsuspended about like, what, three times within like a three day time span. Give me a break, bro. Aye, aye, aye. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. You know, I was watching that show tonight. And like I said, we were texting back and forth, me, Q and Stames. And I, I just got to a point at around, I don't know, 930 ish. I said, you know, this is so bad that all AEW has to do when they get on TV is not be stupid. That's that's how bad Raw was tonight, in my opinion. It was all over the place. It was very disjointed. Nothing really makes sense. Nothing really big happens. It's. I'll say this. Once their ratings come out, I'm pretty sure that they're just going to go down, down, and down, even though they teased Becky for the end. I think the hourly ratings are just going to, it's going to be drop, drop 
for hour two and three. It, that's how bad it was. Honestly, they need to consider changing that name. It's it, it should honestly honestly be the Monday Night Flaw because that's basically what it is right now, bro. It, it's like there's nothing good about it, or maybe even call it like in the old days it used to be Raw's War. Call it Raw's Bore because that's all it is now. Yes. And it's sad that it's come to that point. And I shouldn't even have to you know come on here and rag on it and like say all these bad things about it but there's it's to the point that there's nothing really good or positive to be saying about it oftentimes and that's why you know guys like us are are tuning out and we're watching like new japan or ring of honor or you know AEW once that launches i I, you know like i feel like right now as sad as it sounds they're not giving me much reason to actually tune into that program you know, watch yep. this for the next three hours. Sure. I mean, most people, you know, whether you're working a job or, you know, you're going to school or whatever, most people, you know, you come home, you mainly want to like relax. It's like even like, well, bro, like, you, don't, you don't even have to go. You don't even have to take it that far. If you want to sit down and play a video game or what, read a book or watch Archie Bunker, there's no reason that you need to turn on raw. There's, there's really not go ahead and watch <laughs> Archie Bunker. You're not going to miss anything. You're really not. I mean, I look, we're having a uh, half hour conversation here, give or take a couple minutes. I, I pretty much told you what you missed. No worry. You don't, you don't have to go check it out. I told you. That's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Three hour it, it show. Al- aye, aye, aye. Yeah. It almost seems that way, doesn't it, bro? Mm-hmm. Hey, if you like our content and you like this video tonight, be sure to like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff because it helps us out, and hey, it helps you out as well. So with that, I just want to say that most importantly, try to keep it locked and loaded on our channel here because we got a lot of stuff coming out in the next couple months. And, you know, even this week, we have a lot of stuff planned for you. And more importantly than that, though, Keep fighting the good fight. Soldiers of shoot.